So this is roughly what it's gonna look like. Bear in mind, that's all gonna be trimmed. There was one little drip. Yeah, it's a shower. It's a hole in the shower pan. It's different size tubing. I just can't help but be skeptical. Like, there is not an airtight seal here. This is unusual. I'm okay with peen sitting down. I used the potty. Yay, Benny went potty. I used the potty. How did the potty work? Hello, we are Ben and Rebecca, and this is our road puppy, Lucy. For the past four and a half years, we've been exploring North America from top to bottom and coast to coast, all while working towards the dream of driving around the world. And you know what? Things are finally falling into place for us. Before shipping across the Atlantic, we need to prepare our camper for the adventure of a lifetime. But what we envision being a two to three week project snowballed into a three month long renovation nightmare upon discovering hidden water damage. We've broken down the project into five videos. The Dometic 12 volt air conditioning installation, replacing a water damaged subfloor, upgrading the toilet to a separate tiny, the renovation process as a whole, and then we'll wrap it up with a video about the mistakes we made so you don't make them yourself. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. And we'd also love to get to know you better. So check out the membership program on our YouTube channel. Welcome to our video about installing the separate tiny toilet in the wet bath of our camper van. Before we get started, look below and you'll see chapters uh, so you can skip straight to the parts of the video that you want. For example, drilling a giant hole for the ventilation tube in our brand new subfloor. So here's the situation. We had horrific water damage underneath the wet bath in our camper van. And one of the problems came from the fact that the caulking around the cassette toilet was always coming loose, pulling away, and water would seep down around the sides. And this was happening because that horrific water leak was coming from our water tank, unbeknownst to us for several years. And it was rotting away the floor so the cassette toilet didn't have a stable platform to base itself on. And I'd just have to re-caulk it all the time, but it eventually got to the point where I was just gooping on caulk more and more. And it really, it looked bad. It looked horrible. <laughs> uh, we did really love our cassette toilet. It wasn't that we didn't like it, but since it was, the bathroom was being completely disassembled in this process, we had always really wanted to try something new and saw this as our opportunity to do so. In the near future, we will make a video about the pros and cons of the cassette toilet versus the separate tiny. And there are some of each. So in the realm of, we'll call them alternative toilets for vans and RVs, when compared to the traditional black tank, Nature's Head is a very common brand, but there were some critical things we just did not like about it. Some annoying features that didn't sound like things we wanted to deal with. Uh, it kind of comes down to three things. The urine. Number one. <laughs> the poop. <Number> <laughs> <laughs> the disposal process. Um, so with urine, you have to practically take the whole toilet apart to get the urine bottle out to be able to dispose of your urine. Take that one step further and that urine bottle is transparent. So imagine da -da -da, walking through like any location and everybody's like, oh, they've got pee. It just seemed, ew. Tacky. Uh-huh. So then we move on to the poop. Um, I don't know if you've watched any videos about how you dispose of the contents of the toilet, but I will just say that I had nightmarish visions of us dumping 
all over the ground when we're trying to pour the contents yeah. into a bag or scoop it out with a shovel or it's very know, like intimate. a little shovel. Too intimate, in my opinion, for poop. Um, and also uh, the contents, the, the coconut or moss contents that you mix in with the process, it takes up a ton of precious space in the van. And when we heard how much you have to carry with you, it seemed just because we full time and it's not like we go out for a weekend here or there or two or three weeks at a time, it seemed excessive to us. Lastly is the whole turning it over process. It's already kind of a labor intensive process to use a toilet in an RV. And it just seemed like a it wasn't for us. Much. But yeah. now one thing noteworthy is that it appears like the airhead toilet, we don't have any personal experience with it, solved a lot of those problems. So just got to put that out there. You might be like we were a few months ago and thinking to yourself, what is the separate tiny toilet? It sounds new. In fact, it is not. Separate is a Swedish company. They've been around for over 40 years, but they just released the tiny toilet into the US market about a year ago. So Separate is not a composting toilet. It is a separating toilet. It's a fancy way of saying that you pee into, your pee goes one direction, your poo goes a different direction. Pee in a fancy pee bottle, poo into a fancy bucket. Expanding a little bit further on why we chose the Separate Tiny, it was easy use. That was tremendous. You can just lift the lid and you can pull out the non-transparent pee bottle or the trash bag with your poo and paper. One of the nice features about the nature's head is that you can dump the solids in nature because it's just kind of compost or it will soon be compost at one time. And you can do that with this toilet. You just need to use a uh, compostable trash bag instead of plastic, dig a hole, bury it. Now, when you do use a, a regular plastic trash bag, you just dump it into a trash can. A lot of times that's what nature's head folks do as well. And that brings us to another topic of how did we actually come upon the separate toilet? Well, we did this remodel in the midst of the COVID pandemic. So everything else was sold out and backordered on Amazon. So we were looking for creative options and happened upon this. And the more research I did, the more I was like, Ben, this is it. This is way better. This is so cool. We have to do this. I know some of you may be thinking that isn't composting better for your solids? Well, yes and no. There's a few aspects to it. Uh, first off, depending on how many people are using the toilet, we've heard that it needs to be emptied anywhere from one to three weeks. Another thing is that uh, composting the process, scientifically, it doesn't necessarily start or complete in three weeks. Uh, that shaving and moss product that you use, that's more so to control moisture. And also in the traveling lifestyle, you know, if you're in a tiny home and you can go dump it in the woods, sure, that is better. But the vast majority of folks are just dumping it into a bag and taking it to a trash can where it's never actually gonna become a composted soil-like material. And just in case you're wondering, this separate tiny does have the feature of being able to plumb the pee tank into your gray tank. Uh, we chose to buy the removable option because at the time that we purchased it, they were readying a kit where you could then convert it or add on to it the gray tank feature. So if in the future we want to do that, we can. Before getting started with the installation, let's throw out a disclaimer. We're going to call this more of a how we did it video instead of a how to video. We're by no means experts and there sure probably are better ways of doing things. And if you know of them, put them in the comments below so you can help others down the road. Just don't be a prick about it. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, we can move on to the installation. One thing to take note on, uh, we did an entire bathroom remodel. So, uh, 
We are at the point where we've installed the stainless steel shower pan and we're getting ready to do the toilet. As you're seeing, our toilet is mounted onto these white pieces of plastic board. We're gonna get into what they are uh, next, but we did this because we did not want to drill holes in our brand new stainless steel shower pan. And we also didn't wanna risk those holes leaking and ruining our brand new subfloor, which is why we got into this whole dang renovation floor to ceiling process in the first place. The manual says that the tiny toilet can be screwed just straight to the wall. There's no problems with that, but we opted to screw it to the wall and the floor. Yeah, we travel full time. So anytime you're in a rig full time, you're a lot harder on stuff. We wanted to make sure that the toilet and the bathroom would hold up. If you're using this more of on like a weekend or vacation type basis, it might not be necessary for you to do the back wall and the floor. So what is this mysterious material that we have our toilet screwed to? Well, it's called Marine Board or another brand name is Starboard. It is a HDPE, high density polyethylene product, and we got it in half inch sheets off of Amazon. It's great, it's strong. There are issues when adhering it to things, but we'll get into that in a bit. We also decided to adhere this whiteboard to the back wall in addition to the floor because the back wall of our bathroom, the base of it is a sheet of, of quarter inch plywood and then they're half inch studs. So the toilet didn't line up with the studs and putting the board back there allowed us to screw the toilet to the board so it was nice and secure and then the board into the studs. Just made for a lot more stable experience for the toilet. As I mentioned, there are some challenges when it comes to adhering marine board. And one of the characteristics of it is not much sticks to it. That is kind of a good thing in uh, many of its applications. But with research, we found that 3M8005, it's an adhesive, would do the job. Now, the way this works is you have to buy the adhesive, then you have to buy this special gun, and you have to buy a special 10 to 1 ratio mixing nozzle. And it was not cheap. I think we paid, gosh, probably well over $150 for everything. And that was just to secure the marine board to our stainless steel pan and to the back of our shower wall. We would not be sitting in Italy waiting for our truck to arrive from it, Baltimore. It sailed. I hope <laughs> Denny doesn't get seasick. I hope so too. I think we left him some Dramamine. Uh, but yeah, we had so much help from friends and family to make the renovation possible and everything that came after to get us over here to Europe. Yeah, the moms helped by giving us some going away gifts, which helped with purchasing the large components of our remodel. Uh, my buddy Russ, or our buddy Russ, he lent us tools, which was priceless so we didn't have to buy anything because our house is in Alaska. Uh, my dad, he let us take over his house for like three to four months for this entire renovation process and he helped with a lot of the nasty tedious tasks and further he helped in a lot of the footage that you're seeing in our videos of this series are from him yeah yep. and he only agreed to like two or three week renovation <laughs> yeah but parents do anything for their kids we love you guys and thank you so very much next up Let's talk about the ventilation fan, a most critical feature of the toilet install because the negative pressure it creates ensures that your living space does not start to smell like the contents of your toilet. In order to do that, we had to run 12 volt for the electricity of the fan. And we also had to drill a hole where the air would be pushed out of the truck from the toilet. And for the electricity, I tapped into our 12 volt system and I ran a wire up to a switch located at a high point uh, on our back bathroom wall. We did this because we wanted to be able to turn the toilet fan off independently without turning off an entire circuit because there were lights and USB charging uh, ports tied into that circuit as well. And this was a perfect scenario with us shipping our vehicle overseas is we did not need to have that fan running 
while Denny is sitting in the belly of a boat. And that would just be wearing down our batteries. Now we have to talk about the ventilation and deciding where to drill that big ass hole in our truck. And unfortunately, our options were extremely limited. If we would have gone down, straight down from that factory pipe on the toilet, it would have been hitting a steel plate, which was part of the wheel well for our rear tires. And it would just get beat up by gravel. That wasn't gonna work. If we would have gone straight up, we would have hit solar panels and I sure as hell wasn't about to go redoing our whole solar system. If we would have gone 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and then up, that would have put it, also, we would have had three 90 degree turns, which the manual does not recommend, but it would have put it right by our max air roof vent and that just did not smell like a good idea. As much as we might have liked to, we were also not going to relocate the bathroom entirely or rearrange our roof during this particular remodel. So that left us with the option to go across and down through the new subfloor. And when we had the shower pan fabricated, we made sure to arrange for a hole in the right location to do so. And the separate tiny is a European toilet. That being said, for the US market, they have provided an adapter piece. So we snapped them together, made two 90 degree turns, which is what they say you can have, and then shot it down through the floor of our camper. Now on the outside of our camper where that pipe came out, there's a plastic PVC piece with a screen to prevent bugs from entering your system, which would be a whole horrible problem as well, but it just didn't fit quite right. So don't be surprised if you need to goop up plenty of silicone to uh, seal that in. And then I just screwed that piece onto the pipe coming out of the floor. At this point, it's time to screw the toilet in place. And a couple of things we made sure to do. One, hook up the fan, the wires for the fan, before we screwed the toilet in place. And since we were doing this in a wet bath, we also used stainless steel screws. And also since it's a wet bath, we had to do a water test. I can't lie. First water test, there were some drips, but those were resolved with the help of a little 3M4200 on the uh, wet bath end of the connection. And then down below the shower pan, I made sure we had access, I added a little bit of silicone for good measure and no more leaks. So our subfloor, which is brand new, should stay nice and dry. That wraps up this aspect of our renovation. The only thing left to do was use the toilet. See you guys later. Bye. All right, love you, Dad. Love you. I just can't help but be skeptical. Like, there is not an airtight seal here or anything. Like, obviously, you sit down and it opens, but you poop and your poop is right there. I just, I guess that fan creates enough of a uh, vacuum. And then to pee, you always have to sit down, which, you know, we knew going into it, but. Then they got this blue little urinal puck, I guess. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, here goes nothing. It is like very solid. There is no like looseness or unsteadiness about the toilet. Makes me feel very secure. Well, hey, I used the potty. Yay, Benny went potty. I used the potty. How did the potty work, Benny? Well, there's no mess in here, so I think it worked. You hit the right hole? Yeah. You have a aim? No, there is no like choosing on the aim part. Oh my God. <laughs> Be careful, buddy. Like, uh, put me in to see my girlfriend. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Well, it's the next day. We have both used the toilet for number one and number two multiple times, and I'm impressed. You know, you would think there might be some like skid marks or anything, but like that hole really does open up wide. And also that suction of air keeps like a, uh, a negative pressure against all the smell. Yeah, it's actually quite nice. What about you? 
yeah, it doesn't smell at all. Um, I was super nervous because I was like, how can they make holes for all the different body sizes and shapes and styles? so that you don't pee into the poop part or something or poop in the pee part, but- Everything lines up. Everything goes where it's supposed to. It's quite pleasant. It's really comfortable to sit on compared to our cassette toilet. Yeah. I never felt it's it was It's like deeper, longer, and like the cassette was just a whole nother toilet. It was very narrow. Yep. So I'm happy with it so far. Yep. We'll see how it progresses. And yeah. well, hopefully we don't have any messes because I double bagged it. <laughs> Okay, let's share some final thoughts about the separate tiny toilet. First one, stay tuned for a long-term review video as we thoroughly put it to the test in uh, full-time van life. But I also wanna say it's not necessarily the best toilet for a wet bath. Uh, there was a little bit of water that made its way into the bowl section. It wasn't necessarily gushing, but it was enough to add moisture to a place where you didn't really want to have moisture. Yeah. So the part that actually you need to protect is where the lid lifts up. There's a crease there, a crevice, and that's where the water dropped down into the solids bucket. Uh, as you may or may not know, my mom helped us out in Baltimore when we were waiting for the truck to ship. And while we were there, She's an awesome seamstress and we didn't get video of this before the truck left and we actually didn't finish it before the truck left so we have it with us. Mm -hmm. But we essentially made a fancy vinyl shower cap for our toilet. And so now we don't have to use a nasty trash it was a, bag. It was a brand new clean it trash clean, bag. But it, still but was, it was like you're touching right. a trash bag while you're taking a shower and it felt weird. Yeah, it was very <laughs> tacky. Another final thought is put a lot of uh, thought <laughs> into where you put your ventilation pipe. Unfortunately, we did not have a lot of options and we'll just leave it at that. Sometimes we feel sorry for people who walk up to the front door. Yep, but that will be a whole nother <laughs> video. And this one is a wrap. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you're watching this down the road, check out the rest of our renovation videos and we'll see you on the road because we're in Europe and picking up our truck in about two weeks. Something like that. All right, bye. What's wrong? What's that hole for? I don't know. You're the one who did this. Get it like this. Yes, there is. Here. Okay. Go like this and we'll, and we'll bolt it down. No, we'll bolt it down right here. This is the last thing you're doing. We're going to eat. No. He's bored. <laughs> Just the tip. Makes me feel very secure. Okay, so all the gentleman junk does hang down into that bowl area. All right, I can't focus and talk to you and do this. No. <laughs>